Okay. Well, thank you everybody for, for coming to the session, especially because it's, it's a different session in which you can watch me through the through the internet. I promise I try to be there. I tried to, to fly just today in the in the afternoon, but the airport was closed. Today at six o'clock ten minutes in the morning, I was supposed to uh, take off from Madrid Airport. I was at five o'clock in the morning in the airport and uh, then I received the news that the airport was closed, so it was impossible for me. But I didn't want it to to let you without uh, show the the new FOCA. So we've been uh, trying to do this. I'm I'm very happy with the technology because it's working very well. So I uh, I can watch you. You can watch me. I can listen to you. You can listen to me. So I can do all demos. Let's uh, let's hope that that you enjoy the the talk. And uh, and uh, I want to to do a request to you because nowadays in in Spain we have hard days for for our country and we got a big problem. The big problem is not uh, people unemployed. The the worst problem in Madrid is that all good in Spanish engineers are leaving the, our country and probably you you know some uh, Spanish engineer. How many of you are working with? An Spanish guy in near in a company or in a company near to you? How many of you? Yeah? Please give love to all Spanish engineers. Okay? We want them to be back, but in the meantime, give love to them. Okay? We promise. Well, <laughs> this said, <laughs> I, I'm going to start with, with the talk, with today's talk. The title is in Spanish, you know, because Spanish is better, but in English is HTTP colon slack slack because I'm going to talk about how to use uh, IPv6 in in on the internet to hack a uh, Windows uh, a Windows network. Of course, everybody is uh, is using IPv6 uh, today. Probably most of the people think that they are not using IPv6, but in fact, IPv6 is activated up and running in all Windows machines since Windows Vista. If you go to the uh, network properties, you can realize that IPv6 is is uh, activated. You know, it's, it's in Spanish, protocol of the internet, internet protocol version 6. And the default configuration is this one that you can see on the, on the right hand, which is uh, obtain automatically an IPv6 IPv address and obtain automatically DNS uh, servers. This is the, the default configuration, and probably in most of the companies, in most of the network, nobody is creating a special configuration for, for IPv6. They are in companies, they don't have a DHCP version 6 to provide IPv6 address to, to all uh, networks, to all uh, computers in the network, but in fact, IPv6 is running. If you do something very dangerous like an IP, IP config in your Windows machine, you can realize that you have the local link IPv6 address. This one, the FE80 colon colon, is the local link for IPv6. And it is working. And the most important is that in the local link, I mean, in the network segment without using a router, is the, the it has the priority. So if you if you want to if you want to connect two computers in the same network segment, they are going to use IPv6 by default because it's uh, it's the priority protocol. So if you do uh, a road print in your in your Windows box, of course you are going to 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 watch the IPv6 uh, routing table in which you can see the default configuration, which is First of all, connect to the local link, which is uh, colon colon one slash 128. Then the local link for IPv6, and then the third one is the is the own computer, the local IPv6 address in the local computer. IPv6 is is working, and if you do something uh, something very simple, you can realize the importance of this protocol in all Windows machines. In this example, we are doing uh, we are doing something like a ping to an IPv4 
uh, address. As you can see, we are using the minus a to obtain the host name. In this example, the host name is server. In the same configuration, in the same machine, without doing anything more, we can do ping server. And that we are going to obtain is that the Windows machine is going to prefer the IPv6 net, uh, IPv6 protocol instead of the IPv4 protocol. This is very important because most of the security uh, security tools, security um, measures that uh, sysadmin are creating in the network are based are based on the on the idea that only IPv4 is configured in the network, and it's not true. IPv6 is also configuring in the network. The the magic behind this uh, simple demo is the local link manager protocol. This protocol is included in all Windows uh, machines since Windows Vista. I mean, Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8. And the idea of this protocol is that before connecting to uh, any computer on the network, with this protocol, the, the client is going to try to find all addresses related to the destination computer. So in this example, you can see how the local link manager protocol is trying to connect to, uh, is trying to discover the server machine using IPv6 and IPv4 network, connecting, uh, requesting the information to the broadcast, requesting the information to the DNS using IPv6 uh, queries, using uh, IPv4 queries, and so on. In the end, the local local link manager protocol is going to to uh, obtain all ways to connect to the destination. And if in the end it's possible to connect to the server using IPv6, then the computer, the computers are going to use IPv6 to connect each other. That means that <clears throat> all, uh, all security tools related to IPv4 attacks are not ready to, the, to, real, to discover the IPv6 attacks. One of the most important attacks in IPv4 network is the ARP spoofing, the R spoofing. R spoofing attacks uh, are well known, and almost all, comp uh, all networks have a special protection for R spoofing uh, attacks. That means that, uh, or the computers have a special procedure which is detecting the R, uh, R spoofing attack, or the network switches have a special protection for ARP spoofing attacks, but in IPv6, ARP is not used. Instead of the ARP table, we got the neighbors table, which is more or less the same, but based on a different port protocol. As you can see, if we, com if we use the net cell interface IPv6 so neighbors, we are going to obtain a similar uh, table uh, as the ARP table, but based on IPv6. So in this example, we got IPv6 uh, addresses related to MAC address. So in the end, it's more or less the same, but the big problem is that the tools and the RSPUFEN are useless in this environment because we are using a different protocol. The idea is that in IPv6, uh, we use the neighbor discovering protocol, and this uh, protocol have uh, five different packages. Uh, messages. Uh, the, uh, the first two are neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisement. And the behavior is more or less the same like uh, R ARP. So the first one is requesting information about an IPv6 address. So neighbor solicitation is doing something like, okay, who, who has, what is the MAC addresses, MAC address of this IPv6 uh, address? And neighbor advertisement is the response. So the guy or the, the computer with this IPv6 address is going to respond with, uh, okay, I got this IPv6 address and this is my MAC address. So uh, in this uh, screenshot, you can see how it works in a, uh, in a very simple query. As you can see, we are requesting from this IPv6 address, 2001, column, column, one, column, one, and uh, and we are sending the query to uh, broadcast to multicast, multicast, and the query is 
requesting the MAC address of the IP address 2001, colon, colon, one, colon, two. So in the end, the computer with that IPv6 address, in this example, 2001, colon, colon, one, colon, colon, two, is going to respond to the, uh, to the computer who was searching for this MAC address. This set is very similar to uh, ARP protocol. So in the end, it's different, but the attack is more or less the same. The most common attack is the uh, network advertisement spoofing. So in this example, we got an attacker, and the attacker has this MAC address. I mean, the MAC address ending in 4E. This computer, which is the bad guy, is spoofing this IPv6 address, the one who is ending in 40B2. And is sending a network advertisement message to this IPv6 address, the one who is ending in D3FF. So the bad guy is spoofing this IPv6 uh, address, and the next thing that is going to do is spoofing the other guy, the other computer. So in this second package is sending an spoofed IPv6 uh, package pretending to be the IPv6 that ends in 40 B2 to, sorry, pretending to be the address uh, ending in D3 FF to the IPv6 address ending in 40 B2. And of course, it's the same guy, the attacker, who is who has this MAC address, the MAC address ending in 4E. So this is the most common attack, and uh, it's very easy to do. There are a lot of tools in, in Backtrack to, to do this. We, we created uh, this special tool. It's more or less like Cain. If you know Cain, it's more or less the same, but we got a lot of uh, attacks based on IPv6. So the first network, that the, the first demo that I'm going to do is very simple. It's just a man in the middle using a neighbor advertisement spoofing. So let me share to you my desktop. So um, share my desktop. So here it is. Not yet. Yeah. Whoop. Now we Perfect. can see it. Could you see my desktop? Yes. OK. I got two virtual machines. The, the one on the left, the one on the left is the server. And the server has an IPv4, an IPv4 address and an IPv6 address. So I'm going to configure the IPv4 address. OK. With a normal IPv4 connection. So let's get into the properties and configure IPv4. So 192, 178, 01. So right now, let's clean everything from previous demos. And OK. Ew, go. I need to configure the IPv4 network. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh my god. Ew, go. <laughs> so let's configure <laughs> the IPv4 network. Just one second. Network, okay. What happened to you? Ah! <laughs> well, no worries. I cannot configure an IP or IP4 address, which is very bad for me. But the problem is, of course, the virtual machine. <laughs> I'm not going to, it's okay. I'm going to do some number three. Okay. 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 Now activate it. And now. 
Okay, I finished to configure the IP before. That's all. <laughs> no. Well, let's do the demo. <laughs> well, as you can see in in this uh, in this uh, um, in this uh, server, I got an IPv4 network and of course the local link in the IPv6 network. If go, we go to the other machine, we got more or less the same, the 192.178.0.2. If we do ping minus A, 192.168.0.3, let's do the ping, come on. <laughs> Unavailable. What happened to you? It doesn't make sense at all. At all. Well, I'm going to. I'm going to. It doesn't make. Sense. Ah, it's, I need to activate it. Okay. Okay. Well, very hard to configure to IPv IPv4 address, as you can see. Well, we got the connection. So, if we do the ping again with minus a modifier, we can read that the host name is server. If we do ping server, then we can see how the the connection in the local segment is using IPv6 uh, protocol. So in this environment, uh, environment, I'm going to open the evil focal, which is running in the in my, my host machine, in the, in my personal machine, and uh, we got an scanner. This scanner is trying to retrieve all IPv4 addresses and all IPv6 addresses, trying to do some special tricks like uh, figure out what IPv6 address is configured in the local link uh, in the local link uh, IPv6 protocol because uh, in most of the cases that depends from the MAC address so in the end uh, evil FOCA is recognizing the network so in this environment we got a lot of uh, attacks and the first one is the neighbor advertisement spoofing which is quite simple we only need to select the server which is the one ending in 7222 and the victim or the Windows sharing machine which is the one ending in 786. So this done we only need to click on start and Evil Foca is sending the two package, packages uh, needed to do the man in the middle. So in this environment I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to open uh, Wireshark and just go to the client and connect to a shared folder. Let's see if it is working. Okay, and we got in the shared folder a, a file, a txt file, which is password txt and with, with this uh, text message. Very simple, but if we go to the Wireshark and we sent for um, fail. Oh, what happened to you? Something went wrong with this car because no, 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 because it's using the IPv4 network instead of the IPv6. Well, something went uh, went wrong with the with the I, with the server, so I need to reboot the, the the machine because something is working hard with working bad with the IPv6 protocol because right now uh, it's using um, IPv4 instead of IPv6 and it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to to do the next demo and then I'm going to finish this one, which is the the simple one. So. Let's stop. Let's stop Evil Foca. Let's reboot this machine. Sorry for it. And let's continue with the demo. Something went bad with this machine, as you can see. Well, we don't need this machine for the second demo, so 
let's go to the slides and let's do the other demo. So, well, the first the first demo is is very well known. It's very easy. It's very easy to do. The only thing that you need is that uh, both machines are well configured with IPv6 and IPv4, as you can see with the local link IPv6 address. But the second the second demo is uh, probably is the most uh, is the most important because is the the main topic of this talk. The idea in IPv6 uh, protocol is that uh, there is a special protocol which is Slack that, is, uh, that means stateless address auto configuration that allows routers to send the default gateway to all computers in the network segment. The idea is that there are two uh, messages which, is, which are router solicitation and router advertisement and with these two messages uh, a computer can request uh, for a default gateway when it it is connected to a network. So the idea is that every computer that connects to a network requests for the default gateway, sending a router solicitation message. The routers are going to send the response, which is the router advertisement. The idea of the router advertisement is that it's not necessary that previously the computer sent sends a router solicitation. So every router connected to the network can send router advertisement to all computers, and all computers are going to create a new IPv6 uh, address that connects to the default gateway and are going to configure the router sending the router advertisement package as the default gateway. This is very important because every computer that sends this router advertisement is going to, to be treated as a router. So in, in, in one environment like the default Windows uh, machine configuration, all machines are waiting for routers. And routers are, of course, man in the middle, uh, man in the middle sch schemas. So, the most important is that with only one package, it's possible to configure all IPv6 protocol because by default, all Windows machines are accomplishing the DNS auto-discovery protocol. DNS auto-discovery protocol in IPv6 uh, said that every computer, if no other DNS is configured in the machine, is going to use these three IPv6 address as the default DNS. So in the right moment that we send a Slack package to one computer and that computer configures the default gateway, then we got the IPv6 uh, configured, but without DNS. But at that moment, the DNS auto discovery will be up and running. This said, in an environment in which we wanted to do a man in the middle attack to any computer on the network who is going to browse the internet, we don't need to do anything more because by default all web browsers are configured to use the IPv6 protocol when all when a host name is requested. This is the default configuration for Mo Mozilla Firefox, and in it you can see how is uh, by default uh, by default is configured to false the network DNS disabled IPv6. That means that by default is going to use the IPv6 uh, protocol. In Windows, there is a, a strange behavior because if you got an IPv4 protocol and an IPv6 protocol uh, perfectly configured, I mean, with default gateway in the IPv6, IPv4 protocol and default gateway in the IPv6 protocol, and you got a DNS configured in the IPv4 protocol and a new DNS configured in the IPv6 protocol, Windows is going to use by default the DNS configured in the IPv4 protocol. That means that it's supposed that DNS is only one. So it doesn't matter if you configure to the DNS using the IPv4 protocol or the IPv6 protocol. In Windows, by default, if you got the IPv4 protocol and IPv6 protocol configured, Windows is going to use the DNS uh, version 4. 
if we got a Windows machine with IPv6 only configured, then the computer is going to use the, D the DNS configured in the, uh, in the IPv6 protocol, but all queries are going to be uh, requesting at type records. It doesn't make sense at, at all, but that's the way in, in which Windows is working. We need to, to discover why Windows is doing this, but uh, in fact, Windows is doing that. <laughs> and there is a special case in which if you have IPv6 uh, protocol and IPv4 protocol uh, configured only with the local link, I mean, for instance, when you configure, uh, you connect to a Wi-Fi network and the DHCP doesn't give to you an IPv4 IPv address, then in that case, the configuration which is going to be used is the IPv6 and all queries are going to be searching for IPv6 records. That means that if we wanted to do a man in the middle in, the, in that environment, we need to do something similar to this. In this example, let's suppose that we wanted to do a man in the middle attack to, a compu to, to one computer that connects to uh, his, its personal banking website. So in this example, let's suppose that the banking website is not configured with an IPv6 uh, record, and let's suppose that the default router, this one that connects the computer to the internet, is not supporting IPv6 at all. In that environment, we can do something uh, something that allows us to create an IPv6 network between the victim and the attacker and an IPv4 connection between the attacker and, and the internet. So in this example, with this, when this computer connects to internet requesting www.mypersonalbankingsite.com, we are going to retrieve the four A's uh, query record. In this moment, we are going to use the DNS 6 to 4 service to connect to the original DNS on the internet requesting for an IPv4 record. Record In that environment, we are going to retrieve the IPv4 address that our service is going to convert in a, an IPv6 to 4 IPv6 address. That means that for the victim, the destination website is in an IPv6 uh, address. At that moment, the victim is going to use the default gateway in the IPv6 network to connect to the bank. And in that point, in, uh, we are going to retrieve the get HTTP uh, request in, over the IPv6 network and convert that IPv6 uh, request to, a, to one IPv4 request. So, uh, what's that? Uh, it's very <laughs> it's very simple <laughs> so we are going to retrieve the html well, page and we are, we are laughing laughing Gemma, because there's a java update window <laughs> a java yeah it's not it's, Where? it's not you it's um... <laughs> ah, <cool. laughs> can you see the the slides or you have an special pop up <laughs> Uh, on, the, on the laptop on our side. <laughs> ah, okay. So, do you remove it? Yeah, there was a nice definition in the keynote about uh, what Java means. Yeah, like uh, oh yet another uh, vulnerability announcement. So, it was just fitting to the keynote. <laughs> so, continue or, or yeah, wait please. until you. Yeah, please go on. <laughs> continue? Yes, please. Ah, okay. So that's the idea that we are going to do with, with Able Poker. With Able Poker, we are going to configure the IPv6 connection, and, and Able Poker is going to do the network address translation 6 to 4 and also the DNS 6 to 4 translation. In this environment, in a man in the middle schema, uh, we need to, to deal with the HTTPS connection. And there are two different approaches that we can use. First one is the, the SSL strip approach. In this, uh, in this approach, the idea is that we are going to remove all S from the HTTPS links when we are sending the, the pages to the, to the victim. 
The second approach is just to use a fake uh, CA to create dynamically on real time fake CAs to the to the victim. The idea is in, on the second schema is that the victim is going to retrieve an alert and and then it's necessary to click on okay I configure I confide in, in this uh, in this digital certificate. So far, Evil Foca is doing only SSL trip. So let's see how it works in and this environment. I'm going to share my desktop and let's do the demo and I'm going to to start the Windows 8 for later. <laughs> but right now I'm going to use only this Windows seven. So first of all I'm going to configure IPv4 in the local link. Let's suppose that we got the one six nine two five four three two three three uh, point two IPv IPv before others. Let's disable to clean up everything and let's enable. Well, this is the normal configuration when you try to connect to a Wi-Fi network or whatever, and you cannot connect to the you cannot connect to the DHCP uh, server, and then you got the local link IPv4 uh, address. How many of you have happened this anytime in the past? How many only local link in IPv4 with without DHCP? Yeah. Everyone. So, in this environment, in this environment, we are going to do something very simple. So, first of all, I'm going to use Evil Foga and I'm going to use the Slack attack. So, I'm going to select the victim, which is this one and just send the package. After this is done, we got, as you can see, a new IPv6 address which is which had been created by the by the computer, by the victim, to connect to the default gateway, which is the evil polka. So in this environment we got we got right now IPv6 address and also the default gateway and if we do an IP config slash all, we got also here in the DNS server the DNS auto configuration servers. As you can see, uh, the, they are FEC zero colon zero colon zero colon FFFF colon colon one, two and three. So this done, if we go to to my local machine and we do something very complicated like ping troopers dot day we got an IPv4 address. If we connect to to the DNS and we configure an four A's request for WW troopers dot D we got no answer because troopers.d is only working in IPv4. IPv4. So in this environment, if we go and do something like ping troopers.d, troopers.d, here it is, we are retrieving, we are receiving an IPv6 address. This is because the evil folk is converting the IPv4 address to an IPv6 address. So this done, we only need to go to Firefox and as you can see we can browse the internet. We got we got no IPv4 connection at all because we got the local link but everything is up and running. Let's stop this. Let's stop this. We can go to troopers. So D, 
and we got all the website and everything is, is working and everything is up and ready and we don't have IPv4 at all and troopers don't have IPv4 at all. In, if we go to, to the attacker machine here, we are going to, whoops, we are going to start capturing network package and we are going to do something like very simple like oh sorry like pin pin w troopers d and then we go to the wireshark let's see come on too many packets So, oh, sorry, it's, it's on the cast right now. We need to test another another IPv6, IPv4. So let's try it with W, um, uh, FBI.gov, .gov, for instance. <laughs> Ping. Ah, here it is, FBI is working in IPv6, and if we go to the Wireshark, <laughs> we can see how we got here that the victim, which is using IPv6, is requesting to the DNS auto discovery the FBI.gov in the IPv6 record. Then the computer, uh, the attacker computer, which is this one, is requesting to the local DNS here in, in my network the same hostname, but using the IPv4 record. And then we are doing the same the, the same with the response. When we got the response with the FBI.gov, we are going to send that convert to an IPv6 uh, address. So you can clap, it's a very nice demo, please. <laughs> Go ahead. It's amazing. You are doing a man in the middle using IPv6 with just one single click. Hey, how many of you want the evil poker? No one wants the evil poker? <laughs> okay. So, if we go to the to the bit thing and we go to Google, we are going to I'm going to connect to Google here in my in my local machine. Here I'm going to open uh, a new tab, sorry, HTTP Google.s because Spanish is better. And we go to the, this is my local machine. And come on, Google. It works better over IPv6. <laughs> So let's see, google.com, hey, what happened to my my Google connection? Well, something with my browser right now. I don't want to, to break the, the demo. So in this example, after google.s, uh, load the, the page, we are going to retrieve the HTTPS link to Gmail, but in the victim machine, we got the Gmail configured as an HTTP, not an HTTPS. So I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to open in a new record, and as you can see, it's the HTTP link, not an HTTPS. This is because Able Foca is uh, removing the S of all links to do an SSS, SSL sniff. And in this example, we got a, a web page. I'm going to stop this capture. I'm going to start again. And the last example with this is that we got a victim in, and we are uh, opening a, 
a web a website that is requesting a user and password so i'm going to use my username and my password uh, and let's try to log in okay we failed with the password but if we go to the capture and set from http http dot request method equals equals post okay we can see how it is working as you can see the pitin is using ipv6 to send the request to uh, the attacker and we are sending the, the request to the original the original website in both cases the first one and the second one we got the same the same information so we can go to any one of them and use the follow tcp stream and in the end we are going to be able come on Ooh. We are going to be able to read the username, Chema, and the password with this poker rule. Okay? <laughs> very easy, very simple. Just one single package. So, well, one single package and one evil poker. Let's say it. So, I'm going to, to stop this because there are a lot of traffic yeah okay okay so let's try the last demo because i don't like to to have problems with one demo Ooh. so let's try the first demo once once again so let's see Well, it's opening. Let's open. Uh, let's activate the machine. Maybe later. <laughs> and let's configure. Let's configure the 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 another the other machine with a normal local IP before address. For instance, let's stop evil Foca. And let's configure one nine two one six eight zero two. That's all. Let's disable and enable to have a clean network interface. So, well, here is easy to configure. Let's see in the other machine, which is not very well. So let's. Okay, it's a server machine, so I think that's the problem. So let's uh, use CMD and let's IPv config. Well, we got the 192, 168.03. I'm going to to test pin minus a 192.168.03. It is working the pin, so let's see. It is working in IPv6, and if everything is is okay, we only need to connect to the file server, and uh, the the protocol is going to be using IPv6. Let's see if everything is okay. But first of all, we need to use the evil Foca to do the man in the middle using the neighbor advertisement spoofing between the victim which is this one and the server which is this one this one as you can see i'm very used to read ipv6 addresses right now <laughs> so let's start the man in the middle and let's open the a sniffer and then if everything is okay we go to the file server and then we open the file 
here is the password and then we can do lot of IPv4 a lot of IPv4 hey here it is yeah we said SB okay and as you can see right now the the uh, file service is running over uh, IPv6 and of course we can do a follow TCP stream and as you can see we can read the all the talk between server and client and of course here is the password okay hey it is working Well, you know, the demo effect, something happened always, but in the end, we did it. So let's go to the, to the slides. And share troopers. Here it is. Well, in the end, in the end, the IPv6 uh, protocol is in your network. Uh, if you uh, didn't do anything with IPv6 uh, protocol in your net, net, network, then you have a very big problem. With There are a lot of tricks that can be done with IPv6. I just wanted to, to show you how to create a man in the middle using IPv6 to IPv4 uh, when you connect to the internet, but there are a lot of tricks. This one is another trick, which is a denial of service uh, attack with the slack protocol because uh, in ipv6 you can have a lot of gateways and every time that a new uh, router advertisement message is sent to a, a windows machine this windows machine is going to create a new ipv6 address to connect to that router and of course the ipv6 networks are almost uh, infinite but the problem is that the memory of your Windows machine is finished. So after 1,000 router advertisement messages, you are going to have a denial of service in, in the Windows machine. Right now, there is no solution to this. Uh, the only response from Microsoft is just to, OK, uh, uh, don't let a router advertisement uh, storms attack in your network, so use something something, uh, some protection in the switch or in your network infrastructure to protect your Windows machines against that, that attack. Well, and that's, uh, that's all. Uh, uh, just as conclusions, one thing, IPv6 is on your box, also is on your network, and the, the main problem is that um, IPv4 security tools, IPv4 security attacks, are not working uh, on the same way in the IPv6 protocol. So you need to think twice about the security of your network if you have IPv6 uh, on it. It's not easy to remove uh, IPv6 because after watching this, this talk, most of people think, okay, I'm going to disable IPv6 from all computers. That's not easy because if you uncheck IPv6 in your Windows server, probably you will have uh, problems because some of the services are using only IPv6, so take care about disable, disabling IPv6. And there are a lot of tools uh, in IPv4 that are not working in IPv6, and there are a lot of new tools in IPv6 that are not detected at all by uh, IPv4 protection. I, there, is, there are scanners, there are man-in-the-middle techniques, and so on. So that's all. Fear the evil poker. Fear the evil poker. And I would like to say thanks to the to, to people working in, in THC. They created a very good set of tools in that you, you can use it in backtrack. You have Parasity 6 that allows you to do network advertisement spoofing. You got tools for doing uh, denial of services tools for doing uh, Slack attacks and so on. And of course, uh, a Scapy framework that allows you to create a lot of schema. And that's all. If you have any question, I'm here to try to answer them. Gemma, thank you very much. I think, applause, thank yeah. <laughs> As you can see, Chema, at least we guys, we are loving Spanish people. So um, 
Are there any questions for Gemma? Not many, many questions. Maybe, maybe when will Evil Fokker be available to the public? Okay. <laughs> well, Evil Fokker is, is, Evil Fokker is going to be freeware, so don't worry. You can grab Evil Fokker very soon. Uh, probably uh, this Friday or next Monday, Evil Fokker is going to be released in an alpha version because we are having some, uh, some problem with uh, cookies because we, ha we have to deal with secure and HTTP only cookies. And after this issue, uh, which is almost done, is finished, we are going to release uh, Evil Foca because we wanted everybody to be able to create a session on a website through our Evil Foca. So, <laughs> guys, enjoy Troopers. I would like to be with you having dinner, have a beer for me, and hope to see you next year. Yeah, we hope to see you again next year in person and not via WebEx session. So, Gemma, thank you very much. And Thanks enjoy the good weather in Spain, right? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.